Well, yes, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to uh, our service of morning prayer with the St Luke in the City team. My name is uh, Louis, I'm the curate with the St Luke in the City team and um, we'll be using our uh, autumn liturgy for morning prayer and I put a link in the as a pinned comment in the comments um, with uh, a link to the, the liturgy if you want to use it but um, you don't have to uh, you can just listen along and pray along with us and um, please do join in our reflective discussion after our readings um, good morning Yvonne uh, get your woolies out on Friday is that so okay getting colder on Friday thanks for the update Yvonne I must admit I think um, I, I'm you know I think a cold snap might be quite nice. I don't. I don't mind a bit of um, a bit of cold weather, but then again, I have the luxury of living in a nice warm flat. Um, I do like running in the cold, certainly. I've also put uh, in the comment with the link to the liturgy. I've also put uh, our readings for today, so um, you can follow along with those, or again, just listen along. Uh, we're continuing our series reading through. Um, Mark's Gospel. So um, as we gather and um, before we begin our liturgy we'll hold a moment of quiet. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So now we come to um, our oh, good morning, Sally. And now we come to our moment in uh, our liturgy where we invite you to light a candle um, to mark this time and space that we share together as a sacred time and space. And so we pray. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith and hope. For our future as a parish, a people, a world. We trust in the alchemy of the Holy Spirit to bring her dream to life here amongst us. Gather your people, O God, that your dream for us may come true. Amen. And so, um, we pray our collect and um, today is the day that the Church of England remembers um, Hugh, Bishop of Lincoln, 1200. Um, so we'll pray the collect for Hugh, Bishop of Lincoln. O oh God, who endowed your servant Hugh with a wise and cheerful boldness and taught him to commend to earthly rulers the discipline of a holy life. Give us grace like him to be bold in the service of the gospel, putting our confidence in Christ alone, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, Vivian. And yes, good morning to all those joining us. So now we come to our first reading and um, that is Psalm 29. And uh, as usual, I've uh, chosen this psalm because I think that it speaks into the reading from Mark's Gospel that will follow it. Um, 
often um speaking of, of bishops I, I heard that like once upon a time to be a bishop you had to have memorized the Psalter that's the entire book of Psalms and be able to recite any psalm um on the spot so someone would just say you know psalm uh, 127 and you'd have to recite it so they say um i do not have anything like such a knowledge of the psalter but the way i tend to choose the psalms with our readings is having uh, looked at the reading and had a bit of a think about it um i tend to remember single lines from psalms without necessarily now and again i'll remember the psalm but more often than not, I'll just remember a line or an image or a couple of verses. And it's usually that which speaks into it. Um, uh, and it's uh, it was actually verses seven and eight of this psalm, Psalm 29, that occurred to me. And I couldn't remember it was Psalm 29, but they it's that particularly that resonated with the reading that we'll have from Mark afterwards. Um, so... Psalm 29. And good morning, Jackie, by the way. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord, the voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So yes, um, something about the, the voice of the Lord and the power of creation, the unfathomable power of creation um, that I think we get from that psalm um, definitely speaks into the reading from Mark that we'll have now. I, I do love the image in that psalm, by the way, of the oak trees writhing, because if you look at the form of oak trees, they do writhe. They have a kind of serpentine writhing, frozen serpentine writhing motion or slow motion, the slow motion of a, of a tree as it grows. Um, very beautiful poetry, I think. So. Our reading from Mark. And today it's Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 13. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared with them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. 
he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. Good morning, Janet. No need to apologise for being late. I'm certainly not one to criticise anyone's timekeeping. Um... Okay, so following our usual pattern, um, I'm going to read our reading again. And please use the comments box to share uh, any thoughts you have about the scripture. If it's a really familiar piece of scripture for you, perhaps something that inspires you or troubles you or something you've got questions about. Um, or if it's familiar, perhaps something new has jumped out at you about it this time. Please do share that. Um, and if it's not a familiar uh piece of scripture for you um if it's this is the first time you read it or it's you don't know it that well please share what is it that strikes you about it um what is it that's speaking to you out of the scripture today um do share those things in the comments box and we'll uh briefly discuss them um in our uh, reflection afterwards so our reading again mark chapter 9 verses 2 to 13 Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. Excellent, Jackie. Jackie studied this O-level RE, so you can tell us all about it. Janet says, wonder how they knew it was Elijah and Moses. Did Jesus address them? I know. Excellent question. Um, excellent question. Uh, to which I don't know the answer. Um, 
but perhaps I, I guess maybe you heard them talking or maybe there is just something that this is a moment of knowing this is a moment of revelation isn't it this is a moment of brief apocalypse a drawing back um a seeing something else in fact this is what vivian uh mentions here touching the supernatural or eternal strikes me for a moment they were out of time that's what i think too this is um this is i i always understand this as an eschatological moment this is a moment from the future in the past that we are drawn into as well um and it's a moment i think of uh uncertainty i think um nick says that um there's something about uh moses as the voice of the law elijah the prophet jesus the word of god yeah um there's a kind of gathering together yeah yeah okay yeah i think that's a really that's a really um i think that 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 makes sense actually um i also think that um that and and it speaks into what vivian's talking about time actually time is collapsed um god is god created time and i think this is one of those moments of um one of these that that's why it's an eschatological moment it's like that it's like time is being bent and warped and as it says i love the the honesty of the scripture here and as i'm uh you know it is thought there is um scholarship that thinks that mark's gospel is based on peter's preaching um i mean we know it's an oral tradition that that has been written down at a later date um but the honesty of uh peter he did not know what to say for they were terrified that there's something beyond language here and what i like is that peter searches for certainty and what do we know about god well god has dwelt in the tabernacle and the word that's translated as dwellings here um it, the greek is i think or something it means like tents or tabernacles and it's the same word um i think used in the septuagint the, the greek old testament for the tabernacle where god dwelt so i think peter's trying to cling on to the certainty of what what he knows it's like well um i can't quite understand what's happening but this kind of um inexpressible greatness is like the inexpressible greatness of god dwelling and god you know chooses to dwell in the tabernacle so if we make tents maybe maybe that will kind of contain i think it speaks into the human urge to try and contain um the unfamiliar the uncertain the uh trans transcendent really um interesting sally wonders if there's a supportive function that, that elijah and moses are kind of um uh yeah are supporting jesus in the kind of in entering into um into yes his his ministry and his um what he's jesus is here to do that's a really interesting idea a kind of like pastoral support and fellowship um i think that it's interesting that um as who says it here yes it's uh rosalind points out that this is the actually a parallel passage to the baptism of jesus isn't it where the voice is heard and jesus is called the beloved and this is a kind of identification and miranda was mentioning yesterday how in mark's gospel um chapters eight and nine there's a kind of pivot point a hinge point um where um the kind of the jesus's expression of self-understanding is um beginning to open up to the disciples and they're trying to get their heads around what this means and that's it we see that in chapter eight and in um and in this chapter as well you know they're trying to discuss what does this mean the son of man must suffer they're trying to they're trying to work it out um and it's this um the kind of messianic identity of jesus this is part of that that turning point 
I think, towards the cross, really, where Jesus's ministry turns towards the cross. And um, and yeah, and this is a turning point for the disciples as well. Um, I do think um, I really enjoyed reading that psalm with that, actually. And it, it I think it spoke into it um, actually more strongly even than I, I imagined just from those couple of verses. The whole thing um, speaks about the the yeah the the transcendent power of creation the power of creation that is beyond our kind of understanding and our ability to express but that we perceive in creation and i think that's what we have here there's something sacramental about this moment on the mountain um the 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 indwelling in creation of that which created you know that which is a mind-bending paradoxical thing really isn't it the indwelling of god in creation the incarnation and just in creation like making the oak trees rise speaking in the cloud and it's something that you know we are in the position of peter james and john of trying to find language for that being in the presence of the creator who is out of time who created time in time in creation eternity shut in a span as that lovely um lovely prayer that uh, Advent Christmas prayer um, expresses. Um, Rosalind says, yes, baptism, transfiguration, ministry changes focus. That's it. Um, and then the resurrection, because crucifixion is abandonment. Wow, yes. Um, I mean, unsurprisingly, we could, I think, go on with this discussion. Um, but I hope um, that uh, all that, checks out Jackie um I hope that uh, that that is uh up to O level RE standard I hope we've I hope we've done it enough enough justice in the short time we've had plenty more to say though um please continue to use the comments box to share your thoughts on the scripture um and uh, as we enter our time of prayer um anything that perhaps that's raised for you um uh, but also um please use the comments box for any intercessions any people or things or situations you'd like us to pray for and we will hold all of those things as a community to god in prayer so let us pray god of the church we thank you for the the gift of our church communities. And we pray that those may be communities of welcome and that like the vision of the transfiguration, we may have the humility to understand that we do not own the church and that we do not fully understand the church so that we should not try to control the church. We are not gatekeepers. The church is a gift and we enter that into that gift um, and we enter into the, that gift as community, community in which all are welcome. We pray that that spirit of welcome is known in your church communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the world. We pray for all those in authority around the world. Um, we pray for the ongoing transition of administrations in the USA. We pray that that is conducted with decency and for the good of the people who are being governed in that country and not for the narrow interests of those who um, are in positions of power. May they have the wisdom to understand it's not their own power that they wield, but that all authority comes from you and we are charged with using authority responsibly. And nationally and internationally, but in our own lives as individuals too. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people. We pray for our country as it continues to 
deal with restrictions. Uh, we pray for all those places which are continuing to operate, our schools, our hospitals, doctors, um, care homes. We pray for your safety and protection from all who work and um, all who are in any way engaged with those places, all who visit all students and um, school pupils um, and their families who may be feeling anxiety at this time. We pray that they know your comfort and your stability and that all those at places of education are able to have a full experience of education despite the unusual circumstances that we are all facing at the moment. Pray particularly for care homes at this time and for all those um, carers in care homes and who care for people in their own homes. We thank you for their ministry of care and healing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of those who suffer. We pray for all those places in the world suffering conflict and scarce resources and misuse of resources and violence. We pray particularly today for Ethiopia and the developing situation of conflict there. We pray that your spirit of peace and wisdom will govern the actions of all those people involved. And we pray for the most vulnerable in that country um, who are being worst affected by the developing conflict. And we pray also for Sudan and for those places where that people are fleeing to. We thank you that you are with them all and we pray your protection upon them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we pray for all those who have died recently. And we pray for the soul of Anthony Devine, whose um, service will be held at St Dunstan's tomorrow. We pray for Anthony's family and friends and loved ones and for all those who mourn and grieve at this time. We pray that they are able to have the funeral services and celebrations of life of loved ones that they feel is fitting despite the restrictions. And we pray that that is able to be done safely. We pray for all those with a funeral ministry um, around our country and around the whole world, for all funeral directors, cemetery and crematorium staff, for all those involved in funeral ministry in, in churches and in other religious institutions. We thank you for that ministry and we thank you that you are alongside us in our grief and give us the hope of eternal life. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. So, we gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, and please use any version of the Lord's Prayer that you enjoy using. Um, you can use the version on our liturgy. Um, or any version in any language. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we look back at those things that have flourished for a season but are now falling to the ground. For all that has been peace. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we rejoice in nature's bounty and abundance, even as we are aware of waste, inequality and injustice. For all that is wisdom. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we draw closer together for warmth and company as we look ahead to a season of cold and dormancy for all that will be strength and the blessing of God, the womb of creation 
the word of life and the wind of change. Be with us and rest upon our homes, our communities, our world, now and always. Amen. In the circle of God's love we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome we are one. The light never goes out. Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart. May the light draw us together again. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for um, joining us uh, today for morning prayer. Uh, as always, it's a real pleasure and privilege to share this time of prayer and reflection with you all. Um, Laura will be leading morning prayer tomorrow morning and then Miranda on Thursday and then Lily, our student chaplain, will be here on Friday. Um, we do have our Taste of God lunchtime congregation today at 12.15. That is done via Zoom. So if you would like to join us for that and you're most welcome, uh, either see the parish e-bulletin, the um, email that, that goes around if you're on that list. But if you're not, please do email a taste of God at St. Luke in the city dot org dot UK. That is a taste of God or one word at St. Luke in the city dot org dot UK. And we can email the Zoom link to you that way. But whatever you do today, um, God bless you all. Have a fantastic day. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are. And looking forward to joining you for more worship online later this week. See you soon. Thanks again. Bye.